And next I'll introduce my uh, colleague from Wisconsin, Christy DeVera from the city of Superior. So I'm just going to share with you a very much abridged version of the story of my life over the last 18 months as it relates to systems thinking. 10 minutes, 18 months. Go. I want to start by saying thank you. There were several people who are either in the room or watching online that have helped me learn and develop my systems thinking skills. And I feel it's important to recognize them to show my appreciation for what they've done. Gail Epping Overholt brought systems thinking to my area and was therefore responsible for introducing me to it. My Thinkwater team and coworkers, Andrea and Ada, they're just not enough words to explain how amazing that they are. I'm privileged to work with them. Uh, Jeremy Solon for the, what, millions of hours potentially that he has put in leading into all of the efforts leading up to today. The uh, Thinkwater cohort, was filled with such amazingly talented people. It was an honor just to be in the room with them. They really helped me grow and um, understand different perspectives. Dale and Erica were instrumental in the effort that I'll tell you about related to the St. Louis River Summit. And to my employer, the City of Superior, for allowing me to come down this path so that I can go back and better serve the citizens of our fine city. I think it's important to start by showing you my perspective of water and specifically Lake Superior. I've lived next to or worked by the lake nearly all of my life. I find peace and happiness within it. It has shaped my life and the life of my family. And I hope that it will for years to come. I want my seventh generation to be able to love and enjoy the lake like I do. For anyone who may not know, I work for the City of Superior, which is located in the very northwest part of the state of Wisconsin, on the tip of Lake Superior. It is separated from Minnesota by the St. Louis River. And the city there is Duluth. Duluth and Superior are both active port towns, and collectively they are known as the Twin Ports. Being active port towns brings some water challenges, as you can imagine, both from current and historical usage and needs. So now I'm going to dive into my systems thinking story. My first exposure to formal systems thinking was in the later part of 2016. The Twin Ports was fortunate, and several folks, including myself, were connected with Jeremy Solon and systems thinking through a four-hour intro class. I was really excited as we were going through the day, and I was looking around, like, wow, this looks like flowcharts. I'm an engineer. I love flowcharts. And to my delight, it was like flowcharts, but on steroids. <laughs> I was in heaven. It was great. But there was an excellent turnout and some seriously excellent discussion on how to more broadly incorporate systems thinking into our community as a whole. So our energy was still really high after this when another opportunity knocked. The call came to, for applications to be part of the inaugural cohort for this Think Water School. Me and my team, we jumped on it. We already knew we wanted to develop a citizen stream monitoring program because there was very little connection between our residents and our streams within our city. Some people don't even know we have streams in our city. I mean, you can't miss the lake, but the streams are a little bit more hidden, and you might miss them. So we were excited to have the dedicated and intentional time, space, and support to really help develop our program. But we had no idea how much Think Water would affect the development of our program and how we think about everything that we do. So at our first Th Think Water session, Jeremy uh, showed us this slide and an associated story about looking for Easter eggs. I feel this shifted my mental model of the world and myself pretty much more than any other. What do you mean look harder? Uh, I realized that uh, I expected everyone to understand what I was saying when I was telling them something. And on the flip side, I automatically assumed that I understand exactly what they were saying when they told me something. And that's just not really the case. So I needed to look harder at my perspectives, both um, from my bias at my perspectives, but also those of the others that I'm speaking with. So I started to look harder as we were moving through the Think Water School. But as we started down our path to create an amazing stream monitoring program, it became very clear to me that thinking harder was 
well, hard. Mapping to the rescue. We started mapping our program through various exercises in, this, in the class, and it occurred to me that capturing our ideas, thoughts, and showing how they connect really actually made thinking harder easy. Thinking inside the boxes helped us to more clearly define our goals. For our monitoring program, our goals are to change existing, existing mental models on several topics. We want to connect people, our citizens, with the streams so that they know that they're there. We want them to understand water quality a little bit better because looks can be very deceiving. We want people to know that the curb and gutter in front of their house essentially makes their property shoreline property because of the direct connection to the water by the urban infrastructure. We wanted people to recognize that how they manage their property matters. And we had a solid framework now to start developing that. Using MAC, as people have alluded to before, we were able to define relationships between our budding program and existing programs and efforts within the city that we would not have otherwise. The result of the MAC was the creation of a starter kit, a starter folder for our citizen stream monitors that connects information on specific uh, city programs and efforts that directly relate to water quality. We even include a map of the infrastructure connected to the stream that they're monitoring so that they can see what's underground and those direct connections. Participants will get this information at the start of the program, and then as they're going through and doing their monitoring, they can reflect on that information. And we'll also be having a kickoff and a wrap-up party at the end of the year so that they connect with the other people who are involved, not only with the Citizen Stream Monitoring Program, but our Adopted Drain Program, too, which is at the top of the infrastructure. So as we were well into way, our way of developing our stream monitoring program, another opportunity arose. In July of 2017, Jeremy returned to the Twin Ports and worked with a group of artists and scientists who were already trying to tackle the problem of how to mix science and art to be more effective in our outreach and touch our community a little bit deeper. Again, I feel it was well attended and there was excitement about the potential. We now had more boxes in the mix. You may have picked up on the fact that the Twin Ports has a well-established collaborative community. Partnering on various projects and efforts to protect and restore our natural resources, specifically water, is very common. Although we have accomplished much good, we know we have missed out on opportunities. We know we can do better. But how? How do you know what you don't know when you don't know you don't know? Another opportunity. Several folks worked on a big idea, bringing systems thinking as a main topic at our 2018 St. Louis River Summit. This was gonna reach about 200 people working on, in our community related to water. What if we could help everybody understand the power and potential behind systems thinking as it applies to our water resources? What if we created a serious community of practice? What if we created a map of projects and resources in our area with every, uh, access for everybody? and they used it. Could we improve projects through connections to related projects? Could we be more competitive for the limited available funding? Could volunteer groups be more impactful and matched with more relevant projects? Could we leverage our resources like equipment and data more effectively? Well, we're gonna find out. So we developed the start of two maps um, in Plectica. One focused on projects and one on resources within the St. Louis River. We then physically made them big and brought them to the summit so folks could start sharing their ideas and ideally the relationships between their ideas, projects, and resource with resources with other ideas, projects, and resources. We then fra these framed our conversation and provided a starting point to develop a meaningful com conversation and a tool for our community. Plectica maps that everyone can access and add to to help everyone else know what's going on or how their projects or research might relate to other things that are going on within our community, within the bigger picture. We asked folks to start populating these maps on the first day of the summit with things that they were already aware of, things they were working on, uh, resources that they had access to. The second day of the summit, we spent some time looking harder 
and started identifying relationships. I'm hopeful that out of this activity, we will develop a serious community uh, committed minority in the Twin Ports, not only using systems thinking related to their work, but who will also jump in and help develop this map so our community can move to the next level of cooperation, collaboration, and ultimately restored waters for everyone. The roles we play along the path to a better water future are many and diverse, yet everyone has a role. I'm hopeful that thinking within the boxes will help us connect our efforts within bigger pictures. I believe we can make a difference for the seventh generation. And with that, I thank you for all of the work that you do and for your time today. <laughs>